Okay, I'm going to show you how HDPE, that's high density polyethylene, can be recycled on a small scale to make things like this very tough sheet material or this block material as well, which uh, can be then turned on a wood turning lathe or worked with hand tools to make things like this spinning top, um, light pulls, small objects like doorknobs and so on. The source material for this project is this plastic milk bottle and things like this. And to identify it as HDPE, look for this symbol here. It's a triangular recycling symbol with the number 2 or 02 inside and often it will say HDPE or PEHD underneath. Other items made of HDPE are the lid from the same bottle. Again, it's just got the two in the little triangle there. And this milkshake carton as well. This was a carton of milkshake powder. It says PEHD on there. Interestingly, the lid isn't made of HDPE. That's made of, I don't know if you can see that, that's number five inside that triangle and it's polypropylene, PP underneath. If it's not marked, there are ways to tell whether it's polypropylene or, um, or HDPE. One thing I've found is when you cut HDPE, it cuts fairly cleanly, it bends without showing any special sort of discoloration or anything. If you do the same thing with polypropylene, it tends to snap, and when you stress it like that, it turns white. Not, a, not entirely reliable, but reasonably reliable way of identifying the plastic. So in order to process this, it all needs to be cut into very small pieces. With things like milk bottle tops, that's quite easy. You just cut them up with strong scissors into little flakes like that. Some of the larger bottle tops from fizzy drinks and so on aren't always so easy to cut up, but you can use um, pliers or wire, wire cutters to snip those apart. So it doesn't have to be particularly even or anything, we're just cutting it into small pieces that will be easier to handle and mix. I'm going to mix up all the colours together so I end up with a piece that's quite decorative, but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't just process a single colour, white or, or whatever, as long as you've got enough of it. Okay, and now that we're finished for the day, so that I don't make a mess, I'm just going to store all of my I'm just going to store all of my pieces inside an uncut bottle. I'm also going to cut up this plastic milk bottle. I'll show you the um, easiest way to do that. For some of the stronger lids, or thicker plastic, you, you'll struggle to get through them with the scissors. So I use a pair of gardening secateurs for that, and I find that will cut those into pieces quite nicely. OK, this is the fun part. This is where we get to actually recycle the plastic. And what I'm going to be using for this is this sandwich toaster. This is just a very ordinary sandwich toaster. It heats up to about 180 degrees, which is just the right temperature to melt HDPE into a um, thick, sticky material without melting it to liquid or burning it. 
to stop it sticking to this, this sandwich toaster, I'm going to use these. Um, these are just reusable non-stick cooking liners. And these are safe. These are oven safe. These can be heated up to about 260 degrees centigrade before, before they would uh, start burning. So these are well within our temperature range. So I've got about 200 grams of mixed cut up HDPE plastic from milk bottles and bottle tops cut into small pieces. So I'm going to heat up my sandwich toaster first. Now you might be thinking that I'm a bit mad doing this indoors because of fumes but it just happens that this sandwich toaster heats up to 180 centigrade which is actually just the right temperature to melt HDPE into a soft material without burning it. So in fact there aren't any fumes when I do this. No, the, it makes very little smell, very little mess. Okay so my sandwich toaster is up to temperature. So now I'm going to add the plastic. So I put one of these sheets on the bottom first. I'm just going to put a cardboard ring on there. And the reason for this is just that when I tip this plastic onto the hot plate to stop it spreading out and spilling all over the place. Too much at least. And so what I'll do now is just very gingerly take that off. It's going to spread a bit but not too badly I hope. another cooking sheet on top and then we close down the sandwich toaster and I'm just going to leave that for a little while now. Okay now this has started to melt inside the machine I'm actually just going to clamp the sides of the sandwich toaster down to compress the, the hot plates against the material inside. It takes a little bit of skill to get this right I don't want to overdo this or else I'll break the thing. But this just brings the this just brings the hot plate into more intimate contact with the with the plastic and gets a better melt. As the plastic continues to melt, I'll just periodically tighten these clamps a little bit and it'll just press it down some more. Okay, that's been in there about three minutes now. So I'm going to take a look and see how well melted it is. I don't, I don't expect it to be finished at this stage but let's see if it needs turning around or anything. So I'll just take those clamps off and you'll notice I'm wearing gloves for this. This, this plastic is, a, is 180 degrees Celsius which is considerably hotter than boiling water and that will do my hands no good at all if I get it stuck on them. Good. It's starting to come together into a solid piece, so I'm just I just turned it round, and I'm going to close up the, the close up the toaster again and clamp it shut. Okay, it's been another few minutes, and that should be fully melted now. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So what I've got inside there is a rather messy piece of HDPE plastic. Now I can't do very much with that as it stands at the moment, except we can tidy it up a bit now. So what I intend to do, it's very sticky, that's why I'm wearing gloves. If that stuck to my skin I'd be uh, in a lot of pain. So I'm going to stick those, fold those sides in like that. Peel back the, the plastic there, peel back the separator sheets, get those odd bits back in the middle there, like that. Okay, and now I'm going to put that back in the toaster.
that way around this time. Separate the sheet back on again and just cook it for another bit longer. Okay, that's been another couple of minutes. Let's see what we've got now. Again, it's melted very nicely into a single piece of material. And we need to just let it cool for a little while to take the sticky off. There we go. So, so now we've got a nice continuous piece of plastic and again I'm just going to fold this again just to get the corners in just to tidy up the edges so fold those edges into the middle like that and the same again on that side try and make it as neat as I can Okay, and then back in the cooker and give it another little clamp. Now the, the benefit of clamping it down each time when I do this is that clamping it will help to drive out any little trapped air bubbles in there and it will make sure that all of these layers that we're creating actually aren't layers, they just get united and, and welded together as a single piece of plastic. Now unless I choose otherwise this sandwich toaster, when it's clamped down like this, will spread the, the plastic out each time into quite a thin sheet. That can be controlled though by just placing a little metal nut in each corner of the sandwich toaster to prevent it closing all the way. And the thicker the nut you use, obviously the, the, the thicker the sheet of plastic you'll get out. OK, let's take one more look. It's now been about another couple of minutes. That's looking very good. Now obviously you can control the, the appearance of this material as well to a certain extent. The more times I fold this and process it, the more mixed those colours will become. But I think that's probably about the effect I'm looking for now. And that's probably the thickness I'm looking for as well. I don't want to go too thick on this stuff. I'm just going to take the plastic sheet off and then we're just going to press this flat and let it, leave it to cool under clamps. HDPE, when it cools, shrinks like crazy. There's no way to, to really control that. You've just got to work with it. Um, it is just one of the properties of this material that as it cools, you can expect that to shrink. And if, you don't, if you're not careful, as it shrinks, it will distort very badly. So the way to get a flat sheet of material is to stick it underneath a board, or in between two boards, and then clamp it up like that, or weigh it down. So, that's what I'm going to do, just clamp that together, the clamps on each corner, and I'm going to leave that to cool for probably a couple of hours. That might seem excessive, but as I say, there's some tremendous stresses of developing this as it cools, and if you leave it to cool on its own in the open air, it will buckle and distort, and uh, won't be any use for anything. Right, it's an hour later now. Let's see if we're ready. Okay, and there we are. Our plastic has set into a very nice solid sheet of material. Extremely rigid, very strong, and this can be cut with hand tools that you might use for woodworking. It can be um, sanded, it can be planed, it can be worked in pretty much the same way as you might work wood. Now, if we'd folded that several times and left it thicker, we'd have a block material that we can cut chunks out of and turn on a wood turning lathe or um, saw into cubes or, or anything like that.